All right. How do you feel about, uh, you know, Rikita and that Carter contract? Um, Rikita is just on some insane levels of fucking Crowder dick riding. I don't know why, but we'll see. Well, I mean, it's just the same team politics that have been going on through conservatives since probably 2016 of the traditional conservatives versus the populists. Yeah, but I don't think that this contract was like like that. I think Crowder made it like that because he's trying to... Yeah, and now Rikita's taking his side because it fits with whatever team division yeah, of he course. wants inside of the Because he's like kind of yeah. probably the more anti-established. He's like, I think he's a self-avowed like hardcore libertarian, isn't he? Uh, I don't know that much about him. I've only seen him basically on your stream and like maybe a few hours of the Johnny Depp trial. But yeah, I would agree with that assessment of him. I just think it's like insane. It seems like, at least from my perspective, that Crowder basically, he had a contract negotiation. It didn't seem like he had as much power as he thought uh, in it. Um, especially, you know, if he's employing 20 people um, mm -hmm. for four years, um, let's say he's paying them on average $100,000 a year. I don't know what that is, but that's 2.4 million a year. That's 10 million. So he's going to take home 40 mil for himself. Uh, it seems like that's like probably not even close to what he expects him to be worth. And so instead of arguing over the exact negotiation points of like how much getting demonetized these places were he just made it into a crusade and he got into his mind what he wanted to do and then he baited the lawyer guy from daily wire into a call um i'm actually i'm more conspiratorial yeah. about this um oh, i will really? be conspiratorial yeah i think that crowder was never ever joining the uh, daily wire unless they were going to give him an ungodly offer wait i thought he was under contract with them no no he was under contract with the blaze the blaze yeah oh, okay. i don't think he was ever joining the daily wire i think he knows he's got a fucking huge audience and he does all of his mm -hmm. production and everything himself he in-houses almost all of his shit right um mm -hmm. so if he's in-housed everything his production model is he's like ready to go he's about to leave contract with the blaze meaning he can get his own fans to subscribe to his shit um what better way to start your own media company than to be leaving one and then to shit all over the other and then to frame it as an establishment versus anti-establishment thing i think he planned this from the start he did because he, he registered that domain he got the call to set up the daily wire afterwards all of his arguments are unbelievably fucking stupid um if he wanted to go for a bigger deal with the daily wire he could have but i don't think that was ever the goal i think he's always been trying to spin off and create his own media entity i think that's what he's doing yeah i, I think it kind of shows too with like everything that's out it wasn't like he had sticking points with the contract these were basically term sheets so generally when you're negotiating with other parties um, you send term sheets of like this is kind of what i expect yeah and then whenever we come to agreement on the general terms we can get the lawyers to figure out what the yeah but benny benny is and they'll spend six months going back and forth benny boy said that when crowder offered yeah. he didn't redline anything he wasn't he didn't make a single change to any of the terms he just sent an offer back he's like oh yeah. give me like uh give me 120 million instead and it was like or something i think 30 million a year over four years yeah he wanted a hundred mm -hmm. and that was it so it's like obviously it's not a serious a, a negotiation yeah. so he, Every single yeah, his goal was to just fuck yeah. him over and then do his thing i think yeah, I, I think every single good faith negotiation that I've had, I think the biggest one that I was on was basically for some C-level execs. Um, but basically it was like, um, it was like, here's what we expect. Um, and then here's like 50, you know, terms or whatever, right? And they'd come back with like, all right, well, here's whatever. And then we'd hop on a call and we say, hey, by this term, we didn't mean this. We, you know, we're concerned about ABC. And we think the best way to address that is by XYZ. And they'd say, oh, well, XYZ conflicts with my DEF or whatever. And then we say, okay, well, we both agree ABC is bad. So how can we come together and get together on that? Yeah, people think so, that at this level, people think contracts are being written where you're going to get like fucked by like a sneaky clause or something. Like, or they're yeah. trying to like, yeah, that's not, that's not happening at these. Also, keep in mind, be realistic. People don't, companies don't want to fuck you over like that. It doesn't help mm -hmm. the Daily Wire or Steven Crowder if they're trying to fuck each other over in secret terms. You want your talent well, to be paid well, to be happy working with you, and to go above me and do what they need to do to fulfill the obligation of contract and to be like happy the whole time. You want that. You want a positive relationship with talent always. You don't want, yeah, you don't well, want to be I, adversarial towards your top talent. That's like suicidal. Yeah. Well, it kind of depends on the business model that you're running. But yeah, for the most part, most corporations want everybody to be happy. But there's a lot of people who run scummy organizations. And especially when you can go through, if your intent is to burn through a lot of new talent. And no, like no, 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 no. Yeah, through. I'm very specific. Yeah, but, I'm but, talking about top yeah. talent here. I'm talking about top yes, yeah. A-list talent. Like people Steven that have Crowder, already been proven in everything else. Yeah. yeah. Now, if, if the Daily Wire was drafting like a 30,000 YouTube sub person, they might yeah. like be pretty like brutal. We own all of your content into perpetuity. Once you leave the platform, the terms are not going to be available to you. But that's because that person has so much more to 
gain. But for top talent, you always want them to be happy. You don't want them to feel like they're getting fucked and they've got to like yeah. work for well, you. Especially in entertainment to be with where top talent again. Yeah. Yeah. And especially in entertainment where like they're how happy they are in that like organization and everything, like it, it, like is gonna determine like how well they produce content for you. Like if Crowder's fucking miserable on the Daily Wire, he's not gonna enjoy collaborating with anybody there. He's not gonna have a fun time like producing shit for them. Like nobody's gonna like that. It's just gonna be a battle around. Yeah, and they're never gonna get anybody again and they're never going to be the next Fox or MSNBC or whatever their goal mm -hmm. is uh, essentially to be because I assume at the end of the day they want to be they, they want to be Fox News they want to be CNN they want sure. to be MSNBC yeah. and if you're not able to recruit and attain those people then that just doesn't match with their business model at all mm -hmm. um, at said, least from my uh, yeah go for it. So, someone said if Crowder was 20 to 30 percent bigger he would rival Tucker he's a big guy I don't think that's true. I think that the Daily Wire has a way bigger reach because I think the Daily Wire and a lot of their people are syndicated to a lot of actual like national media. Like Ben, Sh I think this might be surprising you guys, but he I'm gonna make I'm gonna totally pull these numbers out of my ass. Okay, I think that it might be the case that like 60 to 80 percent of Republicans in the United States. I'm gonna say 60 to 80 percent of Republicans in the United States probably know who Ben Shapiro is. I bet like 15 to 20 percent know who Steven Crowder is. That's going to be my guess because Crowder is mm -hmm. way more like an online dude in an online platform, whereas I think Ben Shapiro has very much penetrated like mainstream media, like a lot of like yeah. normal folks will know who Ben Shapiro is. But I don't think a lot of like just kind of like like if I were to ask my mom and dad, do you guys know who Steven Crowder is? I don't know if they would know who that is. I'm not sure. I yeah, I don't think my parents would know either, but I think they would be pretty amenable to his ideas uh, should they come yes. in contact with him. And I think that's a big reason why the Daily Wire wanted to bring on uh, Stephen Crowder, even though he doesn't perfectly match with Ben Shapiro and Candace Owens and whatever. Mm -hmm. He has a unique perspective, which is relatively valid, um, and he has a unique audience that they're tapping into. Mm -hmm. So not only could they monetize uh, Stephen Crowder's audience, so taking the revenue from the Mug Club, but you know what? They're they have a mostly shared uh, ideological base and they could probably push them into a lot of other products which would be the big reason why they would want to bring them on um, i think the big hang up uh, in contract negotiation is on the general idea of the terms and not really as much of the numbers so much because again numbers you, you can always come to different conclusions as to what it is and that generally tends not to be the hang up it tends to be on the ideological points so the big one for steven crowder that he made a big deal was that, oh, well, if you uh, lose your monetization from YouTube or whatever, um, then like, you know, you're going to lose 25% of your overhead, even though he says, okay, well, I've never been monetized here. So I, I think if you rewrote the contracts from a different perspective of like, you I know, I, this I, is going to be- I disagree. Yeah. I understand what you're saying, but I don't think he ever really mm -hmm. cared about that because that's, that's going to be obvious, right? Because that, that, like, if you're getting if you're getting people demonetized and shit from platforms, you know that your ass is grass. You're not going to be able to hold on to whatever whatever fee well, you're paid initially, right? That's going to be contingent upon future advertising revenue. Sure, sure but you can in. you can get get around that in other ways. Instead of being demonetized from YouTube, you can just have a um, it's called a morality clause, right? Because they could have easily written a morality clause instead of it being contingent on YouTube. Uh, it, can, it could be contingent on like appropriate conservative ideals, right? Whatever um, you want. Uh, I guess lawyer legally is to be like yeah, whatever when you say morality clause you're saying that like in a lot of entertainment yeah. contracts they'll say things like you can't do things that show the company in a bad light or that bring bad publicity or whatever essentially yeah right? like yeah. you can't have sex you can't like yeah, do yeah, drugs dude, in an alleyway yeah. yeah Jared Fogel and so because yeah. and, and that's like yeah, that's exactly the same thing as what the don't get banned from YouTube causes, right? So you can rewrite bit. those in other ways. And if you really wanted to, you could have put the same exact idea in that he would only convey the certain ideas. And they said, oh, the easiest way is like, all right, well, you just can't get banned from these platforms because that conveys a general morality or whatever. You can't go off the crazy train of like anti whatever the fuck Sneeko is on. Um, you, you can't do that. You have to be more or less consistent with what we expect of you now. And there's other ways to put that in. And if Steven Crowder was serious, there would have been some conversation around that. Yeah, of course. But that, um, but let's, I mean, like the fact that you're not even sending back a serious counter offer means I don't think he ever yeah. cared. It was, this was all a setup for him from the very beginning. Sure. Yeah, I, I would agree. Um, at a high level. Um, I guess the interesting thing to me was that he only leaked like 60 seconds, uh, or 90 seconds. I, I don't know what the exact time was, but like, he had like a 15 minute video of like, oh, here's my leak call with whatever, uh -huh. Steve, I think was the lawyer. But like, 
there was very little of the actual call that was leaked. There was like yeah, a, but that's a couple because like very short. Clips. The thing is, yeah. if he's leaking anything, he's probably leaking the things that are the most damning. And even of the stuff he leaked, nothing was actually bad. All of it was super standard practice. There's nothing out of the ordinary. Yeah. So I doubt he's got anything incriminating on that phone call. And he was setting that phone call up just to set them up, True. right? Because when he phone calls and he starts talking about, oh, sorry, I don't care Jeremy. about, yeah, I don't care about uh, me, but I'm saying for other guys in the industry, like nobody does this on, sure. like why the fuck would you call a company and say shit like this? He's obviously setting them up, right? Yeah, uh, I mean, especially if at that point he said he was he had already not agreed to the contract. I mean, I think I think it's okay to take a principled stand that like there are certain ways that you can exploit new people uh, in the industry, right? Like having ownership of somebody's content seems pretty extreme uh, without the appropriate compensation, right? So I think a good example of this is what Channel Five slash All Gas No Breaks. No, um, I think it just, when we say appropriate conversation, you have to think about what the parties are coming to the table for, right? If I yes. go to a company, you're not going to own my shit, at least not once I leave. No shot. But I have a lot of leverage, and I make a lot of money doing what I do. But right. if I had 20,000 YouTube subs, and you're offering me a full-fledged fucking studio and editors and everything, and then I'm going to go do mm -hmm. content, you're taking more of a risk on me than I am. I get to associate my name with the Daily Wire. That's amazing. If you're going to say content we produce for you, we own into perpetuity, well, then fine. Fuck it. That's worth it. I would do it. Like... You know well, the meme where yeah, people but like there has to be appropriate compensation for it, right? You, the you agree that is, even if you're the compensation is the exposure, right? I, it, it's a kind of a meme when people say like, "Oh, paid an exposure," but the only meme there yeah. is that like usually the exposure well, is shit. But like if, if well, President Biden was like, "I want you to work on a team for us for like three months or whatever, and we're gonna pay you like five hundred bucks a month," I would fucking do it. I want to be on Biden's fucking team. Like that sounds like an amazing fucking yeah. brand thing for me, you know? Uh, yeah. Okay, yeah. So I guess that's where I disagree. I, I think that. Well, I guess maybe for Biden, you have the appropriate whatever there, but I'm just saying everything else equal. If you were to have a uh, thousand sub YouTuber and you're like, all right, Destiny, I'm creating my DGG, whatever media company. I, I think that there's two different pay scales that you would offer is one where whoever works for you is able to perpetually monetize whatever they create for you. Mm -hmm. uh, and then a second one, if you're able to perpetually monetize it, right? All else equal, mm -hmm. uh, you would say that there, you need to get paid more if you're going to be able to own it in the future, correct? You need to get paid more. You is in the fee to the. You, you are, sorry, talent. sorry. The, the, the person you're hiring needs to get paid more. Oh, yeah, sure. There's going to be some compensation. Yeah, yes. Sure. Yeah. Correct. But at the end of the day, uh, it doesn't make a difference to you as long as uh, it's appropriate to your ability to monetize it, right? So, for instance, uh, if you were to be able to pay somebody $50,000 less, um, then it, uh, assuming that they would only be able to make like ballpark uh, expected value of 50000 plus or minus whatever volatility around that or variance around that, you would say that, okay, well, you know, there's some value to him being able to monetize it and then being able to pay him less for the same content that gets put sure, on Sure, a little site. bit. But like, again, yep. for people who are getting monetized in that way where they're selling rights to their content, these are probably mm -hmm. people that are not in very good negotiating positions. So they're never going to get like an amazing deal. There's going to be a lot of... Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But that, yeah, but again, that's because companies like the Daily Wire want to be able to take a big risk on these smaller content creators. So of course, the terms are going to be pretty exactly. favorable. Yeah. And so... I guess to put this in another uh, context is um, name, image, and likeness for uh, college sports, right? Mm -hmm. There's um, the, the guarantee to get paid is always worth way more than like, well, I could be QB1 for the Dolphins in like two years or whatever and make hundreds of millions of dollars. And the fact that you're able to be paid and they're able to take some sort of, I, I guess, payment on the rest of your career and take some risk on that is always going to be fine, but there's going to be some compensation that needs to happen. And so people like Steven Crowder, who are basically like QB1 for some uh, team, they're always going to be able to demand more, and they're going to be able to push back on a lot of the more strict terms of the contract than they would expect everybody else to be able to. Yeah, of right? course, yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah. So I, I think we're in total agreement there. Uh I think the craziest thing to me listening to Rikita was the fact that he was saying that these terms were unreasonable when the terms are always reasonable, assuming that there's enough money because that, that was instance, the thing that I was screaming yeah. about. Yeah. Cause he, cause like yeah. a contract is fee and terms and they're balanced, right? You're yep. going to give me some amount of money for some number of deliverables for something that for some service I've got to perform for you. It's never a problem with the fee and it's never a problem with the uh, terms. It's the combination of these the two things. Yeah, because you can give me terms that I've got to fucking, you know, be on my knees and worship fucking Donald Trump for like six months or whatever. But like if you're paying yeah. me $5 billion to do it, those terms become a lot more favorable. Yeah. You can never yeah. talk about either of these things in isolation. And yeah, when Rakita was like, yeah, the terms were fucked. No, that doesn't make oh, any sense. Yeah. What do you mean? It's it's a combination of both. If the fee is right, then the terms are fine. If the terms suck, it's yeah. probably because the fee isn't high enough. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah, I, I agree entirely. And again, it's all about it, it's all about the combination that aligns with everybody's balances. Like, I think if you were to give Donald Trump a trillion dollars and you said to him, I'll give you a trillion dollars if you say that Obama should actually be the third president, I think he would take it. I think yeah. most people will take it. Of course, for a um, trillion dollars? Just, yeah, I think so, yeah. <laughs> yeah, just, just to say it once, yeah, absolutely. Like, I... I I think the problem that people have with contract negotiations is when there's a massive imbalance of power and it's like, okay, well, you either, you know, you either come to the Daily Wire and I'll pay you like 50 cents an hour to make contracts for us or, you know, I'll send you to like the gulag over in like Abu Ghraib or whatever, right? Mm -hmm. I think that's where people have the problem. But there was none of that issue at all with Steven Crowder's uh, contract whatsoever. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, again, the numbers that were given out, generally, you give like pretty shitty terms. Um, I think if I was to fault the Daily Wire somewhere, I would guess that they're probably underselling whatever Steven Crowder's value is. And he may have found it like a bit insulting and then decided to go on a vendetta because I've definitely seen that happen as well, where we've offered candidates um, on the low end of our pay, on our pay grade, expecting them to negotiate massively. And then they just like kind of like flip out and lose their shit. And then we just like lose them entirely. Yeah, that's why no, I, I left Twitch. Their counter offer to owned was insulting. Yeah. And I was like, yeah. how, like, how are you guys going to tell me that you've been fucking me for this long? Owned offers me this big thing and your counter offers yeah. to match their offer for me to stay? Fuck you. I'm leaving. I'm not even going to I'm not even going to enter more. Like I'm done. Yeah, that was the reason why I um yep. why I jumped ship to own. But um for a first offer though, I don't know. I just feel like especially when Crowder's numbers aren't public, you know? Like mm -hmm. when people make me big offers now, they have to poke and prod a little bit to find out what I'm getting paid by other people. Otherwise, they're just shooting in the dark. And you don't want to be shooting yeah. way too high in the dark because you're fucked. So they're going to be asking me yeah. numbers like, yeah, like Train actually contacted me for uh, going to kick because he wanted to have a conversation about that. Yeah. But he needs to ask, oh, well, how much are you making on YouTube, blah, blah, blah. Because he's not just going to shoot in the dark. Like, oh, do you want $20,000 to come? I was like, no, fuck no. And he's like, what, well, do you want 20 million? He's like, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm on my way, right? He's going to want to get an idea of how much money I'm making well, so that he can value like what his offer should be, yeah. So what's interesting is typically when we have these type of negotiations, um, we will enter into an NDA with like, hey, we're going to start talking about stuff. I need to know this information to go enter into a good faith conversation. And allegedly that Crowder and Daily Wire didn't have uh, an NDA set up between them. So that's why Crowder was able to leak all this stuff and everything else. Well, and so normally that's because the first uh, guess, offer sheet, typically you're not under NDA until you begin discussing particular terms. Now, they could have theoretically, they could have NDA before that boilerplate offer, but um yeah. I mean, like, they didn't have I, they I didn't think typically before we send any offer, we, we're always ending up under NDA because we can say, I, I can I can have a conversation with somebody and I can say, hey, you know, we, we'd like to have an offer to do business Hear with me, you, Chad. either to Obama purchase a contract, buy your president. business, whatever. Um, we can send you over an offer, but it's probably just going to be extremely generic, but mm -hmm. we're probably going to have to go under NDA or we can just enter an NDA now. And I, usually I, before we're discussing business, we're under these NDAs mm -hmm. because we understand that to actually appropriately offer stuff i have no way to estimate what you're worth without knowing things yeah and, and so i understand it what you're saying i think that that nda yeah. would have happened but the boilerplate the the boilerplate was probably like a friend da right they probably yeah. sent it thinking like here's like a first thing like we'll sign some papers you want to get into specifics but like the first shot was just like a like a friend da like here you go you'll be fine just don't leak like blah, blah, blah. that's probably what they expected but yeah. if it did get leaked right shit that you friend da uh doesn't like people yeah. don't care as much like if it gets like whatever this is our boilerplate yeah. initial offer like we don't care right they probably sent similar offers to smaller talent that like could leak it and they're not yeah. gonna like sue them because it's not worth it or whatever right yeah yeah but yeah i don't know <clears throat> I, I just think it's wild though that they're friends or allegedly friends they've been working together for how long um yeah they, that is true like but in the face, we're know? talking about it's a lot of money <laughs> Right. Well, I, mean, I don't think it's just about the money. If it was about the money, I'm sure they could have negotiated agreements or Steven Crowder could have said, oh, well, I actually want the rights or whatever. I think all that, everything in the contract was negotiable. I think that the intentionality was on Crowder to torpedo the relationship. Yeah, I agree. That's um, But I, when I say a lot of yeah. money, I mean, like, not just money, but, like, it's money, it's empire, it's reputation, it's vying for, like, future leadership position and, like, Republican Party, like, pundit yeah. media, change, like, all of this is on the line. Friendships are not going to fucking carry you through these types of things. Like, there, there's going to be people, like, that are really ambitious that are pushing for crazy shit here, I think. I, yeah, but I think that it comes down to the people, not exactly the, you know, we can still be friendly even if it's not going to work out, even if you have these other ambitions. Uh, I think I think Crowder intentionally torpedoed his friendships to push himself further along because I think they, they could have just done nothing in the background and Crowder still could have done whatever. Mm -hmm. I think he intentionally used burned that bridge because he didn't consider them 
friends enough. I guess. No, well, yeah. I think it's because he has ambitions to like try to like he wants to be a competitor to them, a big competitor, and he wants to fight with them. Sure. I think he, yeah, I think he wanted to. I think that torpedoing was intentional, and he gets a whole huge boost in all of his email lists and all that shit. Initially, if I had to guess. I'm guessing the Blaze isn't going to hand any of that shit over to him. They probably own it all because he probably got contract fucked with them initially because he wasn't as big when he signed up. Maybe. But now this is a way for him to get all of his emailers and everybody back on a list, right? He probably can't get it from the Blaze, but now he starts his own movement. He's going to leave the Blaze. And now he's found a way to uh, funnel all of his prior subs and hopefully some new ones into his new email list that he's going to use for the new media site that he starts. So it works out really well for him. I don't know if that email list is the most valuable portion of his brand. I, I agree that it's important, but... I think well, it's more it's, so the ideological juxtapos- juxtaposition. Like, I still feel like you could have got just as big of an email list without going through the... Oh, I don't know, man. I've heard, I think those email lists are pretty and, valuable. When you're getting, like, lists of people... Uh, that are yeah, they're, they're extremely up. valuable, yeah. but I think he could have generated a same size list if he is the last few times he was like, hey, guys, I'm transitioning over. I still think he could have gotten a similar size email list. I think, I think the value in in uh whatever like i still think if he was still aligned he'd still be able to show up on the blaze and whatever and be like oh hey by the way i'm steven crowder join my mug club whatever i still think he would have been able no to the shot do you really think so though oh yeah I, uh, like let's say I you think. leave let's say so, I've i mean got you, you let me contract. come on your show all the time right if i was like oh hey go to ragepro.com and give me your whatever as long as we're still friends and i'm still generating mm, content from you, i can no, no, still no, no, wait, wait. monetize all your viewers but there's a big difference i don't get your subs anymore right imagine if you well, were wait, 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 you're not getting my subs anymore so no 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 wait but so real quick real quick just think about this imagine you're employed by me rage pope and you're telling people like yeah sign up for the rage club blah 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 blah. but i'm no. monetizing all of that and i like pay you a kind of or fee or whatever let's say that sure. we go step separate ways you want to leave the dgg orbit sphere that's fine and you're going to be your own guy if we start making content together and now you've taken away like fucking 200,000 subs from me oof but whatever okay you go you do one thing now you come and make content with me and now you're also saying like hey guys remember sign up for the rage club do I really want you promoting like your subs now that aren't part of my network on your own thing I mean maybe we're friendly but like damn when like tens of millions of dollars are involved yeah but when people when people go, they, they go on Fox News and CNN all the time, they're like, hey, oh, hey, by the way, my buy my new book, uh, whatever, right? That happens all the time, and it's accepted because it's still part of a friendly business transaction where I can go to your audience and I can get exposure because I'm giving something of relatively equal value back to you, and I'm still able to monetize your network by providing you content. I, yeah, I, I, by, I, have, I have agree, but I think there's a difference mm-hmm. from like mainstream media to alternative media where I think that subscription models have been a thing that have been pushing for a really long time, and those subscription models are really important. I think that's why Daily Wire has that initiative to create unique content to sell, because anytime I've seen so many of these ads for that What Is a Woman documentary, they're always, like, that was free as long as you mm-hmm. signed up for the Daily Wire's monthly subscription thing. So if that's what Correct. people are competing on, why the fuck would I ever push Ooh, but, non-endemic talent on my platform? Why would I invite Rage Pope here to do like promote the Rage Club when I could get in-house endemic talent to promote our own subscription model? Like I don't ever want you competing with my product, right? Well, all right. So this is all right. So this is like super complicated. But I, I would say that generally, when you're bringing people on, um, you're having some sort of conversation that's monetizable, right? You're able to go create a YouTube and whatever. And because I'm not, I may be parallel or similar to you. I'm not in a direct competition. And I don't think for the subscription models, you're exactly in a direct competition that I think it is. I think when you're talking be. about like the Daily Wire and the Blaze, my guess is these two are directly competing with each other. And you know for a fact that Steven mm-hmm. Crowder's mug club is gonna compete with the Blaze because he's literally parting from that platform. Right? Sure, but I guess the question is is whether an explicit direct competition is better than an implicit direct competition because the, the question is how much how many people are going to overlap between subscribing to both versus like you have to choose one or the other and where is the value and i think that i bet most people like, subscribe to only one you probably ha- you're probably part of a certain media sphere like you're, you're like a daily wire fan or you're like a mug club steven crowder fan but like like you said ideologically they are a bit different like ben shapiro mm-hmm. Um, I think is unironically compared to where the media landscape is today. I think Ben Shapiro is a pretty solidly center right kind of guy, whereas I think Crowder mm-hmm. veers off a lot more into that populist kind of Trump fan territory. So I do. I think these are competing subscriptions, like competing ideologies against each other. I don't think there's a lot. There's probably a bit of overlap between fans, but I bet it's. I bet it's starting to grow larger apart. Like I think if you're a yeah. bit, if you're a really loyal fan to like Ben Shapiro or to Steven Crowder, you're probably starting to get increasingly pissed off at the other's views, right? Whether it's I, the Crowder I, and, and like the anti-Semitic stuff, maybe a little bit for like Ben Shapiro who's Jewish, or mm-hmm. whether you're like a Ben Shapiro fan who's like, you know, Shapiro was initially on the wall about Trump, he kind of came over, and now he's like kind of whatever again, like, and you're like, yeah, and Crowder's like a big Trump fan, you're like I don't like that shit as much, like, yeah. um, 
Yeah, especially, yeah. Yeah, I, I, I don't have that market research in front of me um, mm-hmm. to say one way or another, but I, I guess my, my, my default assumption would be that there is more money to be made in um, taking Collabing. some from the other versus in direct competition, but I could be entirely wrong uh, on that, and I'm, I, I don't have any data. Well, yeah, your goal, rather than trying to cannibalize another person's subscriber base, yeah. you're always trying to expand, yeah. yeah. But like yep, in cases yeah. where there's like direct competition, like, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. I mean, I think that's the weird thing with um, political alignments is it's very hard to see when brands are either direct substitutes where like you can either buy Walmart bread or you can buy whatever the top tier brand of bread is, Mm -hmm. or if you're going to just buy both brands because they're both pretty palatable to you and you're able to, they're able to buy both. I don't know what that overlap is and what that looks like. And then what the impact of like directly saying that like, this other brand sucks ass instead of my brand's way better is. And I think they would know that more directly. And I think Crowder uh, thinks it's going to be more profitable to say like, not only are the liberals evil, but also um, these big conservatives, um, these big, you know, nineties, two thousand style. Uh, the neocons. neocons yeah. yeah. Are. Yeah. Which is, I, I think, think what Shapiro uh, is like increasingly angled towards, especially, especially yeah. as they get into disagreements over like Jewish people and like Israel and all this kind of weird shit where your neocons are still like lockstep. Like we're like Israel supporters and we're not like on board with any anti yeah. Semitic stuff at all. And they're kind of like starting to veer away from the elector, mm-hmm. um, election conspiracy stuff. But other people still want to lean like really hard into it, I think. It's like a difference. Yeah. yeah. And I think, oh, fuck, I, I saw Nick Fuentes' dream for the first like 10 minutes and they also had like a unique name for the neocons. It was like Con, some, oh, Con Inc. Mm-hmm. instead of like big con so i think that um crowder is also like differentiating himself from like the america for scory for people so mm-hmm. yeah. damn imagine if crowder picked up fuentes on his... he, he, they're, they're not going to i think intentionally distance himself because i think even crowder is extreme enough to accept the actually we hate jewish people and the big conservatives are actually jewish as well that fuentes was pushing yeah. so yeah mm-hmm so are you going to offer a uh, 10% off for schizo September? Maybe. Do you think, um, do you think Crowder is looking at, are there, are there any free agents that Crowder can even sign right now that are like yeah, big I think media guys? I don't think Crowder would want to be signing big media guys. Um, you think he's trying to like start his own names or whatever? There's like nobody. Oh, yeah, like Candace I, Owens, ooh. like part of the Daily Wire. Like I know she did like Temple shit about this. Absolutely. I wouldn't want, if I was Carter, I wouldn't want to sign any of those type of people. The people that I would want to sign are people that I could get for like one to $200,000 per year um, and preferably less. Preferably like startup people, like kids that are just coming out of college or are in college. I could be like, hey, I'll give you like 20, 30 grand. You can be an intern in my company for three to six months and you can have your own segment on the show. And you could already like, he has such a big reach. He's going to get like 5,000 people applying for every position that he has. So he can pay them pretty little. Mm-hmm. But in the the interview process, he can basically figure out, you know what, this guy has what it takes. He's just basically running a talent agency, but for conservative um, whatever. Writers, yeah. And people, because they naturally work in politics, will take way less. And because they'll feel super important by having everybody, they'll or everybody view like everything they say, they'll be able to take way, way lower of a paycheck than he needs. And I think that's exactly what he's trying to do is to be able to screw people but you know he'll be able to say oh you can keep all the revenue whatever but his his risk exposure will be way less and his upside is going to be way higher yeah yeah because he's not going to be cutting fees to these guys he's going to be saying that like your ip rights are going to be more important than like getting a big fee even though for smaller content creators that's absolutely not the case because their ip is worthless no offense but yep yeah um all right i'm gonna run to the bathroom but yeah i i have a lot to expand on so i think the big thing if you take a look at what stephen crowder has he probably has about $5 million to play with every year if I had to take a stab in the dark. I think it's at least $2 million. I think it's less than $10 million. And so if he's trying to build a media empire, well, what does he need? He needs talent. But he's not able to pay. He's just not able to pay like Candace Owens or uh, anybody else um, of that nature, right? He can't afford Ben Shapiro uh, because, you know, he probably makes less than them. Um, and he doesn't have the same reach. And he probably doesn't want to buy somebody who's about as big as him because he's going to compete directly with him, right? Mm-hmm. So what he needs is a bit of media empire. Is he needs a lot of people that are able to create a lot of content um, basically underneath his brand. I don't think it's super important to him that they stay loyal to him, so to speak, mm-hmm. but that they create things uh, and they tie back to him. And so the only way for him to kind of be able to build that out is to get a pretty large number of smaller content creators um, that he can pay probably like one to two hundred thousand dollars a year, and then hopefully make 
two to three hundred thousand dollars on top of them. Sure. Because I think it would be it, way less than that. If he's looking for smaller content creators, you can cut up these contracts for like probably twenty to forty thousand a year, unironically. But yeah. Yeah, I think it depends on how much content they're going to put out and everything else. But like. Nah, you could find like I, people. I the, you could find like decently driven people that will do shit for you for like forty thousand a year. Absolutely, that's because you're. Well, you said earlier, this is like politics today is kind of like what gaming was like a while ago, where it's like if I could have a job in gaming, that's the dream. And like people were drooling. If you had StarCraft two teams sure. that were offering four hundred dollars salaries, you've like made it. Like that's like the dream. I'm gonna pay four hundred dollars yeah. a month to play games. People would do the same in politics. Well, yeah, I, I think the margin that he's looking for is like very slim. I don't. I think he just he's just looking to be like revenue neutral for the people that he acquires for his platform, right? Right? Sure. It doesn't matter if he's paying them ten thousand or fifty thousand or a hundred thousand. As long as he breaks even on the money that he's bringing in from them, mm -hmm. I think the value of his media empire goes up like exponentially, right? Because if you're spending a billion dollars a year and you're getting a billion dollars in revenue, then your value and your ability to reach people mm -hmm. is like massively higher than if you're like spending like ten million dollars. Yeah, and then gross is going to be way more important than net, right? Like you can be netting exactly. like three hundred percent profit, but if you're like even if you're like unprofitable, but you're like gross is like in the billions of dollars. So you're in a way better position. Yeah. Because you've got more room for growth in the future. Yeah. yeah. And I think that's the model that he's going for. And I think the easiest way to do that again is to just hire a bunch of like smaller people, even for just like one or two segments a week, just to have a fuck ton of con um content driven to your site the same way that amazon did basic basically at the beginning is like sell basically at cost or whatever mm -hmm. or maybe you'd add a small loss to like bring people in and then hope that your own personal mug club or whatever is going to cover the difference and then the money that you have banked or the investor money that you can raise will get you to the point of profitability to you can get as large as like fox news and i think that's the model that he's going to be going for um and then I i'm pretty sure that like uh, what's his name? Prouder would even take on people like Zerka who are just going to drive like insane shit mm -hmm. um, and traffic and everything. Uh, even if it's not really monetizable to be selling flat earth, just because it was get eyeballs to the site and you can use that as sales funnels to the other portions of your show. True. Yeah. Okay. Good talk, guys.